Hi everyone, today we'll be covering additives and the preservation using additives. Food additives have been around for many years and its sole purpose has been to extend the longevity of the food. Before we could remember, additives to preserve food have been around for centuries. Long before technology, the goal was to preserve the food without having to constantly hunt for food on a daily basis because the food would begin to spoil. This would then decrease the chances of all the possibilities of mortality. There were many additives and preservative methods for the food back then. There was the sun for drying, using of ice for freezing, vinegar, salt, sugar, and the combining of these in several techniques. Salt was used to prevent food spoilage by removing water from the meat. Removing the water prevents any microbial organisms from going onto the food. If a microbe tries to grow onto the meat, the high concentration of salt can kill the microbial organism by having the water removed from their system. The same effect can happen with a high concentration of sugar. When drying the meat, the same process happens, which in terms not giving the adequate environment for the organisms. These methods are still used to this day, but some adjustments have been made. Additives are now usually to add flavor to the food, additional nutrients, and improve the longevity. We have deviated a bit on the fact that we want the food to taste better, to look better, and to have additional nutrients that the food normally doesn't have. A lot of additives nowadays are used with microbial properties. They work in two ways. The additive is to be absorbed by the microbe and to kill the organism or to slow it down. The other way is to maintain the surroundings of the food so that the microbe cannot grow onto the food, which in terms preventing oxidation. Oxidation is prevented when the additive binds to the oxygen, not allowing for any free roaming oxygens to bind with the microbial organisms, which makes a less suitable environment for the organism to grow. It seems that we have made a lot of changes from the beginning of humanity and its methods. We have continued with the methods as well as added even more modifications to preserve the food. As for technology, nanomaterials have come into the picture, but the reality is they have never left. Nanoparticles are usually 1 to 100 nanometers in size. Because of their size and ability to be shaped, they have grown a huge platform for itself in regards to being applied to medical, optical, sensory, electrochemical, and many more applications. Now some nanoparticles are created naturally within the food, but others are synthesized to control the size and shape of the material. The shape and size of the material usually dictates the reaction within the food. Nevertheless, at the moment nanoparticles have already been implemented into our food for preservation, but there are other nanomaterials that are being studied for the same properties. But nanoparticles can make the biggest difference because of their unique sizes and shapes. Nanoparticles can help by adding smaller dosage for preservation of materials, but still hold the same properties as other materials. It can also help with the amount of sugar intake within our food. The smaller the particle, the faster it may be able to reach our taste buds to satisfy what we are looking for. Lastly, it can also increase the amount of organic nutrients added in within the meal with a smaller size. Because of its small size, it could help with the absorption of the nutrients in the nanoparticle into our system. We have made a great achievement for additives and preservation, but now nanoparticles will be the future to achieve better materials for the food.